Hello, my friends. We're back. ELD, April 16th, 2020. I am just so inspired by everything you're doing right now. I've been reading your emails, listening to you on Zoom. Uh, you are really taking this time as a live time and making the most out of every day. I'm so proud of you and I encourage you to continue to work on the four categories that we're talking about of English language acquisition, which is reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Today, on our COVID-19 battle board, uh, we are gonna be talking about direct quotes. We're taking it directly out of your daily language practice, all right, and covering what and how to correctly apply quotes to academic English writing. All right, and also speaking, okay? But think about it in the context of writing. Remember, you can always go to my website, www.gchairmoney.com to get whatever you need teaching-wise, updates, lesson plans, calendar of events, whatever you need. Our quote today comes from Nelson Mandela. He says, it always seems impossible until it is done. That's you. I, I watched you for the last several months take the impossible and make it possible. That's the power and that's the inspiration that's the love you've showed, and that's the leaders that you are in our society. I see it every day. I see it every time I, I come across you. I'm so proud of you, so keep it up. Today, the first example we're going to talk about is how to apply a period to a direct quote in academic English. Direct quote, remember that. Okay, so the first example is taken again directly from your daily language practice this week, and it goes like this. After bumping the stove, Mr. Tang shouted, that stove is very hot. All right, what do we have first in the sentence? After bumping the stove, what is that? Independent clause or dependent clause? Good, dependent clause, awesome. So we have a comma, right? Then we have Mr. Tang shouted. That in itself can stand alone. All right, so as we're going along, remember, Mr. Tang shouted, comma, we have the independent and then the direct quote. All right, now with the direct quote, we definitely, if this is a standalone sentence, if this is a complete sentence, we want to capitalize in academic English. So we make that a capital T. That stove is very hot. And here's the hard and fast rule when writing academic English. This is mastery skill, all right? Own it right here. The period is always going to be blocked in by the quote, all right? If we put the period after, that's going to be incorrect. We'll put the period inside the quote. All right, at the end of a sentence. Direct quote, we're gonna put the period every time inside the quotation marks, okay? Number two, question mark. When we, when we apply a question mark, it's gonna be different than a comma or a period. So before we talk about commas, I wanna talk about this. Uh, the first example is an actual direct quote question, all right? So you'll see Mr. Tang asked them, is the stove hot? Capitalization, you think we might want to capitalize I? Absolutely, so we're gonna capitalize I. Is the stove hot? Because the direct quote is in and of itself a question, we're gonna put the question mark inside the quote, all right? So that takes care. We don't need to put a period, anything like that after. The punctuation's been taken care of here, okay? So wouldn't, we do not want to put a period here, all right? We do not want to do that, we don't need it. The question mark takes care of the punctuation in this case. All right, question, uh, acti task number three. Did someone say they heard Mr. Tang say, the stove is hot? Real different here, huh? Notice a direct quote, the stove is hot, is not a question. The entire sentence is a question. So, did someone say they heard Mr. Tang say, the stove is hot? Because this entire sentence is a question, now we're gonna put the question mark outside of quote, okay? We don't need to do anything more with the punctuation here. Notice we have capitalization of the, that takes care of that, because the sentence, the direct quote can stay below. Uh, activity number four is a comma. He called them rude, annoying, and bad influences, and he left the room. Okay, so do we need to capitalize here? Is this a complete sentence? Rude, annoying, and bad influences. No, so we're gonna leave it lowercase r, okay? We do not need a comma necessarily here. He called them rude. It's all one thought. So leave it alone. Okay, we don't need a comma there. All right, so he called them rude, annoying, and bad influences. Where do we want to put the comma here? Remember what we talked about, hard and fast rule. We want to block in at the end of what? A direct quote, the commas, or the period. So we're going to put the comma inside the quote. 
and he left the room. Okay. So, if you have any questions, remember, I'm just an email away, a phone call away, whatever you need to build upon your already success and meet your educational objectives, that's our number one priority. I, I Again, I can't reiterate enough, I encourage you, keep doing what you're doing. Keep taking steps forward every day. Uh, for us, our class, our community, anything's possible. Nothing is impossible once we set our minds to it. I'm so proud of you, keep it up. And uh, like I said, if you need anything, email, phone, get a hold of me on through the website. We'll be here for you, support, and make sure that you are continuing to reach your academic, educational goals and objectives. Great job, talk soon.